It's 2021 and it's time to get serious about planning. My word for the year is intentional. And if you wanna be intentional about the things that are important, you have to have planning and forethought. You need to think out what your day's gonna look like and how you're going to spend your time. And the way I'm doing that this year is with the Peaceful Planner. If you want a full review on the planner, be sure to check out the video up in the iCards or down in the description below. But today we're actually gonna be diving deep into how I have set it up because I did the digital planner promise you guys this is going to be a game changer. Show you guys how I do it and give you some tips on how you can make it work for you. And so let's get started. Hi, my name is Katie and welcome to Life in the Mundane. I am a second generation homeschool mom of six beautiful kiddos. And on this channel, we talk all things resources. I love to share with you resources that are gonna help you in your homeschooling and help encourage you in your biblical parenting and how you can utilize those to their fullest potential so that you can make the most of the little moments. This truly is the ultimate all-in-one planner for your stay-at-home homeschool mom. It has got pages for every aspect of motherhood. All of those different things, all those different directions you're being pulled, this has got pages for them. You can actually take this amazing planner one step further and make it work best for you by looking at your life, your needs, and organizing this planner when you're actually printing it and assembling it in a way that's gonna work best for you. But how do you do that? That's what we're gonna talk about today. So step one, you need to gather your supplies. First things first, you're going to want to get your own copy of the digital version of the Peaceful Planner. You guys can head over. I will drop links down in the description below. And no, this is not an affiliate thing. This is just truly something that I love and care about. And you guys can go there to Wendy over at Plan Prep Pray. The code LIFE15, you're going to get 15% off your purchase. Other supplies that you're going to need is some way to print it. Whether you choose to do that on a home printer or you take it somewhere to be printed, you'll also want some way to compile it, to bind it. It could be a binding machine, which is what I have used, or it could be doing simple three hole punch and putting it in a binder. However you choose to bind it is totally up to you and your personal preferences, but you're gonna want some way to do that. As far as other supplies that you need, that's really all you have to have, but a few optional supplies that I personally prefer if you're using a binding machine is clear plastic covers. You can get them on Amazon and I will link all of these supplies down below for you guys, but I just like the fact that it gives it a little bit of resistance to little hands that like to help mom out or spills that tend to happen and then I also like to get these harder covers they're a little bit like a cardstock type material and you could totally just use cardstock if you wanted but it gives it a little bit more structure to the actual setup other optional items that you could add are your washi tape your planner pen stickers anything fun like that Step two is assessing what you actually are going to use. What I love about this is you print what you're gonna use and you don't print the rest. So there's not any wasted material here. But you can also see what do you maybe want duplicates of? How do you wanna organize that? I'm gonna show you guys how I've organized mine so that it maybe can help you assess your needs a little bit better. For my peaceful planner, I set it up in several different categories. And so we've got our ID page and our family's why vision statement here. We've got goals and 2021 preview. So the first section is our monthly views for the whole year. I have January through December printed out here. I love the fact that everything is predated for the 2021 and that is on the digital planner and the printed or the pre-printed planner that you can purchase from her website is actually undated. So if can be used at any point. I love the fact that we have all of our goals and things like that, but that is kind of my first section. That's where I'm going to use my typical calendar pages. And so I began and ended that section with our 2021 year in a view preview and then the 2022 year in review is that way. I also, if you notice, I've created my own personal tabs here by just taking those cardstock like pages and just cutting the tips um, of them to create tabs. It's made it so much easier to be able to find my place and I didn't have to purchase any fancy extras. The next section is our weekly planner. And that is typically where Wendy would have a week in review. Um, but I don't personally like to plan that way. I have my monthly thing that shows me what I need to do for the month. And then I like to have daily planning pages. The next section is more of our daily planning pages. However, I did include my weekly meal planning sheet at the front and her put down sheet, anything I need to know about this week. So if I do wanna do a bit of a, a week at a view, I can just jot that down here. 
Then we jump straight into the daily checklist and planning pages. I always love how these are seriously some of my favorite parts of the planner is these daily printer pages. And then I did keep the weekly purge it page, which is how um, just kind of a journaling place, a place for you to assess how the week went, however you want to use that. For me, I use it at the end of the week, just kind of recap the week um, and more of a journal. So love to have that. I have printed off for this second section, I've printed off about three months worth of daily to do pages and those weekly recaps. I've printed off about three months worth of that so that my planner doesn't get too big and bulky. And the nice thing about my binding system is that I can easily pop it out, add more pages or take away. So after the three months, I'll take out these and I'll add three months more of new pages. And it just keeps it from being too big and really easy to handle. The next section is for homeschooling. So I have got another year in preview. I just reprinted that page. And the reason for this is because I'm gonna use this to track our days that we've done school. So this is the 2021 school year and I will just color in the days that we do our school. We'll have important dates here, but this will be specific to homeschooling if there's specific field trips or upcoming things that are happening. And then that brings us to her hip homeschooling pages. I have done these. We use these as a reverse lesson plan, which is why these aren't written on yet. Um, I label it by the day. I have a note section here if there's any additional notes I need to take. And then I have each child labeled on the side. And then what we do as a group and other things that I want to reverse rec lesson plan. If you're not familiar with what reverse lesson planning is, instead of detailing out everything we're going to do for the day, I simply record what we have done for the day. And for this section, I have printed out enough pages for the end of the school year through the end of May. So um, I have that and then I can print a whole new section later. Next, we're going to get into our password log section. Now, I have obviously not filled this out for privacy reasons, of course. But with our password logs, I decided to print a page per child and I just labeled it in the top corner um, which child it was for. And this password section, this password section is to keep track of all of the different programs my kids use for school. So you see we use Night Zookeeper, Typing.com, Cognifit, we have library passwords for the kids, Kids A to Z, which is actually the new name of Spelling City. And then we've got our teaching textbooks. There's a lot of different kids. I have six different kids. And um, so that's a lot of different passwords to keep track of. So I printed up one for each of the four kids to keep their passwords part of it. Next is the reading log. This is where I'll log what my kids have read for the year. I have one page per child so they can keep track of the things that they have read during the year. They can rate them, they can track the author, how many pages. And then the first page here that I flipped over was things we read aloud in school. So these are gonna be ones that we do all together. And I love the fact that it gives me a way to track each one of those separately. Finally, one of my favorite things in this section is the field trip planner. We've got the ability to put the date we have certain field trips, what subjects it's going to cover, location, address, cost, but we can use this to both track and plan our upcoming field trips for the school year. The next section in my planner is set up for my YouTube channel. I have my goal sheet here because I wanted to have the ability to make separate goals for my family goals of things I want to do in my business. And then I have my YouTube layout. So I've actually used Wendy's Week at a Glance. This is what I was talking about earlier. Her Week at a Glance to use for my YouTube planning. Helps me kind of get an idea of what I need to do for the week. And I've divided my boxes into social media things I need to do, YouTube things I need to do, website learning things I need to do, and then I have places for other. I could also make to-do lists, set my priorities, have anything I need to jot down, anything I need to think about for the week ahead. And I love having the ability to do that. But this is what the planner page looks like on its own. So you could use this in your homeschooling. You could use this for planning any aspect of your life that you want to do. But that's what I'm using for my YouTube planning. The next section is kind of a for you page. This is actually not one of Wendy's planning pages, um, but I'm actually reading through the book of Romans in the month of January. And so I have this reading plan I'm following. And that's what I love about her planner is that I can use her planner pages. But when I have things like this that would tend to get lost around my house, I can just throw it in my planner. So I have my Bible reading plan in there. I have my reading log of what I'm currently reading as a mom. 
I have my family inventory, which obviously I waited to fill out in completion until after this video for privacy reasons, but it's got a place that I can keep track of everybody's clothing and shoe size, clothing and shoe sizes, um, what wants or needs they have, and also some pertinent family information. And then the back section is for cooking. And I love her meal list. She has great meal list, helping you keep track of different favorite things. You can just keep a running list and check whether it's a breakfast, lunch, dinner, or snack. But I decided to print a page for each category of food. So these are my breakfast favorites, lunch favorites, dinner favorites, and then I will do one for snack favorites. Then I used these pages, which these in her original printed planner are intentionally designed for helping you meal plan in a month's glance versus doing the weekly glance, or you could do both. Um, so you would select a different kind of category over here, and then you would select different foods that go in that category. So, but instead, I like to use this planner for my monthly meal prepping. I don't do a ton of freezer cooking, but I do try to do a little bit of meal prep um, throughout the month. And so I'm keeping track of this. I've printed out the next six months or so of um, different planning pages because they're all labeled with the right month, right? And I have just written down different categories of things I want to do. I started doing this in December and it was really helpful. So I have breakfast things that I need to prep. I need to make up a big batch of waffles to freeze, a big batch of breakfast burritos, and some and some muffins. I'll make a category for dinners that I'm going to freezer prep ahead of time. We make meatballs and I will make those and prep those and freeze those, uh, maybe baked Italian chicken or some of the other things. But the idea here is I can plan by category. I can select a few items that I'm gonna prep each month. And if I prep a few meals each month, it really makes my life easier. I have shopping list things that I can add because these are things that are not necessarily in our regular rotation. I can add those down here and the nice thing is, is I, I can do one big freezer cooking day and cook all of these different items at one time. Or what I like about this is I can take it by chunks and say, today I'm gonna do the breakfast category and I'm gonna prep those things and take one thing each week. So however you'd like to set it up, it, this just makes it really easy for on the go. So that's what my planner set up looks like, but I hope it encourages you to kind of think outside the box on different things you can do. Don't be afraid to print duplicate pages for different sections and think through as you're assessing what you actually need to be printed, think through how you can organize it, which is step three. Simply organize the material in the order that makes sense to you. Maybe you want all of your planning pages, the, the monthly, the weekly, and the daily review, and you want all of that in one section, and then you want all the supplemental stuff in the back. If you do, that's great. But this is an opportunity to kind of mix it up and put what you need in each section. Don't forget to use the code LIFE15 if you haven't gotten your planner yet and you want to snag one. And that works for either planner on her website. Be sure to go grab that and be sure to subscribe as we have a lot more amazing content coming out in January. And we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.